I'm Dave Bryant, and uh, now we're talking to our other star bass player guest for the evening, Tony Falanga. Tony, how are you, man? Good, thank you. Great to see you, and it's especially a treat for me to, well, for one thing, to finally get to play with you, because we weren't in a band together. Right, right. And you were also close to Ornette, like towards the end of his life in that last decade, yeah. when I didn't get to see him too often. Yeah. And so for me, it's always great to talk to people who knew him at that time, and I mm -hmm. get a little insight of a period that I wasn't really privy to. You know, mm -hmm. it's just a slight thing, because even though I remember at his memorial, all of us, different people from different walks of life that had known him throughout his life in each decade, it was obvious that we all knew the same person. You know right. what I mean? Right. And yet, I also got the vibe that every decade was a little bit different. You know, mm -hmm. there was like a little bit different spin. So yeah, that's good. But I know Matt Lavelle that uh, that informally studied with him some. You know, towards the end, writes a blog and has had some the experiences when I talk to him he gives me another little window into it oh. so how did you hook up with Ornette how did you meet him James Jordan was on the um, committee of uh, uh, the National Endowments for the Arts right yeah. and, and James was, has a history of, of talent scouting for him right uh, yeah. right and plus you know he's on the committee there so he goes to a, a contemporary music concert and it happened to me I played with the orchestra of St. Luke's for many many years mm -hmm. Okay, and they had a contemporary music festival called Slice, and they would premiere pieces for mostly chamber music, small pieces and everything. And there was one piece that was written by an English composer, Nicholas Ma, and um, they said, let's put it on the program, it was for solo bass. Mm -hmm. So the principal bass, I'm the second bass player. So the solo bass, you know, the principal bass player said, oh yeah, I'll play the piece, and you know, it was all tech, because he had it had been written for a competition. So it had all kind of techniques, you know, wild stuff that, you know, extremes to do with the bass. And James went to that concert mm -hmm. and he sees this bass player play and he's a great bass player. And he sees him play and he thinks he's making it up. He doesn't know that it's every <laughs> note is written out. He, yeah, does, yeah. he doesn't know that. He just thinks, because it's way out. He, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. he just thinks, wow, this guy's doing this on the spot. This is like great. So. After the concert, he approaches him, he says, hey, you know, Mr. Coleman is looking for a bass player, and, you know, would you be interested in playing with him, too? You want to audition for him? And he didn't know who he was. So he was like, well, you know, I don't really know. You know, I'm busy, but, you know, give me a number, and, you know, I'll let you know. Uh -huh. Okay, and then he gets home, and he calls me up, and he asks me, he goes, hey, you ever hear this guy, Ornette Coleman? I was like... When at Coleman, I said, "Are you crazy?" I says, "He wants you to join his band. He wants to audition." Yeah, I was like, "Go." He goes, "I don't want to play jazz. I don't want to be in his band." I said, "Just go, go. Have the experience of just being with the man and just playing anything with him. Yeah, Two yeah. notes, though. Just experience it." So he goes, "Okay." And he lives upstate New York. And at that time, um, Adam Nesbaum, drummer Adam yeah. Nesbaum, lived fairly close to him up there in the same area he calls up adam he says hey adam you know this guy when that calls yeah it was like man i got an audition when we go i'll bring you some recordings man I'll, I'll drop them off this way you can check out charlie hey no his bass play is great man i was like oh okay and he checked them out and he liked charlie's playing he was like oh wow this is nice this is nice stuff uh -huh. so i says you know so he goes and he takes the audition and you know he plays in on you know and he on it likes him because the guy's a fantastic bass player but you know you know, Annette is just like, okay, just play, and I'll follow you. And after about five minutes, he ran out of stuff to play. And he was just like, I don't really know what to play. You know, and he was like, just play, play whatever you want. And <laughs> you know, it was just, okay, but you know, I don't really know what to play. Write something for me, and I'll read whatever you write. But you know, and he was like, no, 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 just play, 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 play. You sound good, you know. Yeah, and he yeah, was yeah. like, so it, he wasn't really comfortable with him. Yeah. But he enjoyed the time with him. And he said, look, Ornette, I know a bass player that's perfect for you. The guy I share a stand with, this is the guy you're looking for. And he was like, well, but I'll work with you. I'll teach you what I want you to know. And he was like, you're not going to have to teach this guy. This guy knows how to play this stuff. And he knows you and he knows your music and everything. So, he, so Ornette says, okay, tell him to come tomorrow morning, 11 o'clock. So he calls me up. When he gets home, he calls me up. I says, how was he? He was like, oh, man, he was great. It was a great experience. I loved it. 
I loved it so much. I was like, I told you, I told you, did you get the gig? He was like, no, I got you the audition. You go in there tomorrow at 11. Meanwhile, it's like midnight when he's calling me up. <laughs> and I'm like, 11 tomorrow? He's like, yep, be there. And he gives me the address and he says, just go there and tell him, you know, I'm sorry, but you know, you're the cat that he's looking for. Yeah. So I was like, wow, I said, this is great. And I go there and I just, you know, play for and then I play a solo piece, classical piece, and then I play some jazz. And then he was like, wow, okay. He was like, yeah, okay, let's, let's play. And he was like, just counted off a tempo and boom, we were yeah. off. And, you know, and he was recording everything on his little right. cassette recorder at that time. And we played at least about a half hour without stopping. And then we finally came to some kind of ending to what we were doing. And, and he turns around and he goes, your friend was right. You're the guy I was looking for. Okay, <laughs> let's do something else. But this time, do this and do this. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. when the lesson started, right away, yeah, yeah, yeah. right away. Yeah. Like, okay, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. And it was just like a learning experience from then. And I basically, after that, I spent, man, it had to be like a few months every day with him, at least Monday through Friday. If I wasn't working or I had a rehearsal, I would go after the rehearsal yeah. and I would just spend the rest of the day with him. Oh man, that's and great. And it was just fascinating, that's great. That's great. man. Cause it's just the hang, right? Just hearing yeah. him talk. Just but being, it, yeah. it was, just, no, but it was learning, learning. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. constant, you know, he was beating me up with all his theories and yeah, all yeah, his yeah. stuff. And he was so happy when another day I would come by and he was like, Tony, I wrote something for you, man. I wrote this piece just for you. And I'd be like, wow, it's great. And uh -huh. it'd be all dots and dashes on, on it there. I said, okay, um, what key said, whatever you want it to be. Uh -huh. um, what, what, whatever you want it to be. Just go ahead, play. I'll, let me go. I'll get us something to eat. And you know, uh -huh. you, you, you play. And he'd come back five minutes later. He was like, and I'm playing like what I think it could be, you know. Uh -huh. And he was like, you think that's what that is? <laughs> and I was like, um, I, I, I don't know. I said, can you just go, like play it a little bit so I could get an idea yeah, yeah. of some kind of thing? And he was like, okay. And he picks up his phone and he goes, <laughs> okay. You know, and I was like, that's what that was? And he was like, yeah. And then he left and he, to get something to drink. And I started going through the notes <laughs> like that. And it really was what he played. What he just played, yeah, yeah, yeah. no bullshit. Yeah. And I was like, "Holy shit, this is like amazing." That really was that. Yeah. You know. <laughs> and then I came back. It was like, "Oh, now you're starting to get it." Okay, okay. I was yeah, like, yeah. "Well, you know, you gave me like an idea of like what I should do with these notes, rather than yeah, just yeah, yeah. me picking them out of random, trying to figure out the accidentals or whatever." So it was, it was a learning experience. So I'd say that we played together for about two months of just that before we got together with Donato. But, you know, during that time, Donato and James and, you know, everybody would always come yeah. to what we would spend because we spent so many hours together. But, um, yeah, I would say, yeah, at least two months. And then we started uh, rehearsing with Donato. But we had a whole book of songs by that time. And it was just like, okay, this is, this is going to be what we're going to play and you know he gave me all the dates of all the gigs mm. and everything and so were you doing trio gigs before they brought in the second bass player yes all right and we did a tour and um and it was amazing and there was this one thing this one learning experience we did uh, new orleans a uh, big festival outdoor five ten thousand people mm. and we're playing trio and he gives me the spot you know so go and he's just sitting there like that you know in his chair yeah. and i'm going and i'm playing this stuff and i'm playing and i'm playing all this you know i'm doing all this stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then i'm like winding up you know doing something because you know i'm like okay and he just comes in you know just out of the blue he just gets up out of his chair he's just like and it was a roar five thousand people I was flying. I, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I shot up to the moon. I, I, I was, it was like one of the greatest moments in the world, you yeah, know, for yeah, me. Yeah. And I was like, wow, man. And we finished the set, went backstage, and, and the manager, I forgot it was Linda at that time. She goes, oh, you guys hit it tonight, you know? And I was like, yeah. I was like, wow, man. And it was just unbelievable. And then the next day, we took a flight, and, you know, he's always teaching me all this stuff. And we play a gig in Italy. Same thing. We do the thing and play the same song. Comes time for my solo. 
go. And he's like this, and I'm playing, and I'm playing, and I'm playing, and I'm playing, and I'm, playing. And I'm getting to like the same spot, bro. and I'm waiting for him to like, you know, do his thing. And he's just like sitting there, like like he's asleep. And I'm like, oh you know, shit. And then I'm like, okay. And I'm just like, well, let's do something else. Let me get into another idea, and let me get into another idea. And nothing. He's not coming in at all. And now, you know. Okay, another few minutes, another, and I'm starting to get a bit fatigued. You know, you know, I'm saying, man, we still got to play like you know a lot, a lot more to the set. You know, <laughs> like I just like drained. You know, I'm I'm exhausted now, yeah. and I'm saying, when is this guy gonna come in and just like, you know, and I'm just, oh, okay, okay, and I'm trying this stuff, and then all of a sudden he comes in and bro, and he starts to play, and you know, the audience went wild, but not in the same way. Yeah, but they still enjoyed it. it was still, but I was just, and I said. Man, and I finished that, and I went to him after the concert, and I said, Ornette, I said, what? It's like, we played that song, you know, with the song. I was like, I was waiting for you to come in. And he was like, yeah, but like, you never came in. And he said, well, I was waiting for you to find something new. And I said, but, you know, the other night when you came in, when I was doing that thing going down with the glisten, you know, when you came, it was like, we gave like, you know, the audience roared. He goes, I know, I know. <laughs> and, and I said, but why wouldn't you do it tonight? Because I want you to find something better. And I was like, but Ornette, you know, don't you want to give them the experience? He was like, I'll give them the experience when you play some better <laughs> stuff. <laughs> you know, you got to play some better stuff, yeah. you know. And I was just like, wow, man. I just said, okay. You know, all right, and just, you know, and it's just like, it was this big learning experience where it's just like, just because it worked out so wonderful the other night, we're not going to do it the next night the same way. Yeah, yeah. Even though it will work, mm. and he knows it'll be wonderful. Yeah. No, no. Got to play it a different way. Got to use different chords. Whatever you got to do, find another way. Find another way that we can reach the same moment. Yeah, yeah. But in a different way. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's different than somebody telling you that is like a, a philosophical treatise, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's like the visceral experience of being on stage and yeah. the thing and the people, it, and it's like, oh, that hits home, right? Yeah, and it's just like, it's just, that was it. And that was the experience playing, and it was mostly that tour. We would play, and he would be like, yeah, you sounded great, and then the next morning I'd see him, and he'd be like, you come to my room, we got to talk. And I'd be like, oh, shit, what's going on now? And he'd be back in his room, and he'd put on the tape recorder, because he taped everything on that right, little right. tape recorder that he got from Japan. And he would analyze everything that I did. Mm. He had already analyzed it, and he went over the stuff. He goes, see what you did there? See what you did there? Mm. Now, if you did that, I would have done this, and then we would have went somewhere. Wow. But you did that, and it made me play this. You understand? And I was like, wow. I said, yeah. He was like, okay. He goes, okay, next. And then he would just, and he did the whole thing. And then he would get into the thing of, I know why you played that. And he goes, you played that because you heard me play this and Donato did that yeah. and you played that. And I'd sit back and I'd be, he's right. He knows exactly yeah. why I played something while we were playing it. And he was like, I know, I heard why you play that, but I didn't want you to go there. I wanted you to go there. And that was the whole, I was like, wow, this is crazy. And then he goes, then, you know, he's always rehearsing and everything. And then he started, he says, you know, I'm going to get another bass player. And I was like, oh man, I lost the gig. I said, what did I do wrong? And he was like, no, 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 no. I love the way you play, but I want you to play more with the arco. I'm going to get another bass player for you. So that they could hear, so that you could hear the stuff that you're playing. Because right. you can't really hear it. You need a bass player to hear what you're doing with the bow. Yeah. And I said, wow. I was like, yeah. So do you remember any specific things where you were saying, he said, you played this, so I had to play that? Yes. Like, so can you illustrate that with something? Illustrate you that. You know, it was, do you remember well, a particular thing? Wow. That would be hard to get a particular. It, it, it was his foresight where yeah. he, we're in the moment, obviously, and he's putting himself in my head. Uh -huh. And he's hearing what he's doing, what Donato's doing, and he's envisioning why I played what I played yeah. because of what I'm hearing around right, me, right. and I'm reacting because that's the way you play right. with on that. You got to, 
You know, so I, it, there's nothing I can't say a specific because it would be very difficult to pinpoint one thing. Yeah, I guess That'd I was just trying difficult. to think. That just seems like a really uh, interesting insight into what kind of musical cue he would take. Do you know what I mean? Like, you played this, so I thought I should play that. You know what I mean? And he very rarely got specific with that kind of cause and effect. You yeah. Know? It's, it was tough. But With he, us, I was just going to say. But no, he, but he tried his best to explain it in his way yeah. what to do. He really did. He goes, I'm going to tell you exactly what I want you to do. But you know his way of explaining is, yeah. is left and right and upside down and, yeah. and you know turn, turn the music upside down and it's bass clef and it's treble clef. All, and it all makes sense while time. he's talking, but right. then when somebody the next day right. says, tell me what he said, you're right. like... Oh, I understood it yesterday, yeah, right? Yeah, and it's just, you're just like, whoa. And then he hears it a different way the next day, and you can't do it. Many times, I'm sure you went through it mm. where you rehearsed something, and you got it down, <laughs> and then the next, and you go home, and you shed it, and you're playing it in a few different keys. You say, oh, man, I'm going to get this for him now. Yeah. And then you come the next day, and you say, come on, we're going to play that. Yep, and you play. It was like, what is that that you're playing? <laughs> Don't play that in my band. What, what are you doing? <laughs> I said, oh, we worked on this. He goes, no, we didn't. I don't know what you're talking about, but don't play that with me. I don't know what that is. And I was just like, man, I just killed myself learning this, going home, learning it before I met him the next morning. And it was just like nuts. But then a day or two later, I would play that. And he goes, where'd you get that from? That sounds good. And it was, I said, it's you. And he was like, oh, OK. <laughs> Well, what an incredible experience to have that one-on-one yeah. -on -one intensive like you did for so long. That's, oh, that's bad. Yeah. But like I was about to say, what he used to do with us, because there'd be a bunch of us sitting around in a circle, and he'd go around and, you know, we plays, and he would critique each of us according to, like, not just what we played, but our personalities, how what, how who we were as human beings influenced what we played, you know? Right. And it'd be like, now your problem is, if you weren't so much like that, you wouldn't have played those notes. And if you thought more this way, or mm -hmm. if your personality was more like this, that would really help because then you would, and then he would right. critique us that way. And it was right. sort of like, oh, I yeah. guess maybe, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you know, you were right because once we did situate, we got another bass play, and then everything started working out well. Mm -hmm. And then um, later on in his days when he started getting dementia and we started working less to the point where we couldn't work and uh, I would still go by you know because I rehearse in a in a studio that's a couple of blocks away from mm -hmm. from where he lived so and they still have that studio and um I would come by whenever I had the rehearsal I would come by and I'd have the bass with me and and you know and he wasn't playing he wasn't touching his horn anymore and and I'd pull out my horn and I'd play some stuff for him and and he'd listen and you know and he'd give me, okay, yeah, you know, try some of that and try some of that. And, you know, and he basically would just give me a lesson. Yeah. And yeah. I was just like, wow, this is great. You know, I'm going to bring a tape recorder and just bring it. So, and I was, then I went to the rehearsal with the orchestra and I passed by on that and I have the bass. And I'm like, when I said, what's the matter, man? I was like, I got taken off this gig. And I told him about it. And he was like, oh, man. He goes, he goes, he, he, he was afraid of you. He was afraid of what you're gonna do. You were gonna take over his band. That's it. He was like, oh man, he goes, people gotta be more exposed to you. And then he says, I says, I know. He goes, what are you doing, man? And then I pick up the bass and I said, I was just doing this. And I'm playing this. He was like, oh man, that sounds so good. <laughs> he was like, man. And he didn't like that. I said, no, man. And, and it was amazing because he had recorded everything. Uh -huh. And then he sent it to the manager because the manager was pissed off that he took me off the gig. And he sent the recording to the manager and he took my track out of the mix. So the recording was everybody but me. And they're listening, they're saying, where's the bass player, where are you doing? And I was like, he took me out. And he's like letting you hear everybody else but me. And I was like, and you know what I was playing? I was playing this. And he was like, you were playing that and he didn't like that? I said, no. And, and the management says, I can't believe it. You were playing. Ex I said, I could hum everything that I played during that thing. And he was like, and he didn't like it. No. And I was just like, and he took me off the gig. And I was pissed. And Ornette, at that time, said, where's my horn? And he had, uh, you know, his 
whatever his person that was watching him and he pulled it out <clears throat> of the closet, took it out and he got it and he started playing and Donato was like in the other room and he was like, what's going on here? And he was like, let's play Tony, let's play. And he was playing and you know, he didn't play for like a year or so. And he started to play, and he started to play, and we played. And oh, so this was like like years later. This was like a year or so after he stopped playing completely. Yeah, okay. And he was just home. Oh. And I, but I was just going to see him because I was there all the I time. I see, you know? I see, okay. And, and he was just like, yeah, and he was just getting into playing, and, and he was like happy. He was like, come back. I want to do some playing with you. I want to do some playing with you. So I was like, okay. And I told Donato, and Donato said, look, why don't you make it like every Friday you come and everything. And I says, okay, we'll make our Fridays. And he yeah. was like... Good, and I come down Friday more and more, and he'd be playing more and more, yeah. and better and better. And yeah. Donato started filming. He went out and bought a, a camera. He goes, yeah. Tony, he goes, if he gets back into playing, we're going on the road. He was like, that's it. <laughs> Cause he was like really into it. And he was like so happy to see me again. Uh -huh. And I was just like, I was, I was so happy. I was like, wow, I got him to play. Yeah. It was like, I got him to play again. He wasn't playing now, yeah, and I yeah, got yeah. him inspired. Yeah, yeah. I said, that's like, because it's working opposite now. I'm inspiring yeah. him. And we were playing, and there was a few recordings that we did after a few months that just started really taking off. Just yeah. me and him. Yeah. And then Otto goes, man, goes, we're getting close. We're getting close. And then after that, it started to, mm. you know, just go down a little bit, and it wasn't the same. But I would still go there, and we would still play, and, you know, and then we continue to play and continue to play and and then you know it got to the point where you know he went to, into the hospital mm, really? you know but we got to play for i would say about six months yeah. every friday uh -huh. and we would tape it uh -huh. and you know he would film it and you know it was good and i, ha I had him play so was this right at the end of his life or was yeah. it a few years before what? No, no, no. This was right at the right end at of the his end. life. Yeah. Oh, okay. wow. And we went, went to the hospital. That was it. Oh, and then, okay. yeah. you know, he was sick for a, a week or so. And then, you know, mm. he passed away. And I was like, we were supposed to get together. I know, but he went to the hospital. And I said, he went to the hospital. What yeah. we going to do? He wasn't feeling it. But I was still, you know, I got him, I got him going right oh, before God the end. God bless you. <laughs> and it was, yeah, it was still great. But, you know, he never really played, you know, up to the way he was playing. Yeah. yeah. You know, after. But, you know, it got to the point where he was still you know, doing his, doing his thing. But so. it's still beautiful that you, you know, enabled him to have that experience. Yeah, well, know? I got him to play again. Yeah, he yeah. stopped playing for at least a year, at least. Wow. You know, and I got him to pull out the horn, and I got him to, to and Donato says, yeah, he's playing, he's waiting for you. And I yeah, was like, yeah. oh man, this is like old times, man. No, he's waiting for me to come over so that we could play. Yeah, no, it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah that was great. That was that's a great awesome. experience. So, okay. With all this stuff, I know, like we said, it's it's difficult because he, the, the way he puts stuff and he's got his own language and his own formulaic way of putting the things together. But can you give me, with all the time you spent with him, mm -hmm. something specific in the way he talked to you about playing or something like that? I, I, it just feels like that you were just so blessed to get this intensive, you know, one-on-one uh, -on -one kind of experience. Right. And so I just wanted... I want to hear, I'm jealous. I want to hear something. I want to get right. something from you. Right. Right. What did he tell you? But now, you? as far as writing or improvising or like, you got to be a little bit more specific what you're looking for. Well, because he, he covered a lot of stuff. No, I, I hear He you. went into his theories about, you know, about how, num, uh, how the, right. you know, the, the notes will come around when you go all the all the math formulas that he would always write. You were in the airport yeah, yeah. with him, and he'd always be writing all these like yeah, yeah, yeah. you know the note. And he goes, "Look, the note came in C, and then C came in there, and then C came in there." And you're just yeah, like, yeah. "Okay, on that, you know." And you're just yeah. like, ran, you know, running all these numbers. And then if we go that way, you see how C, see how many times C is going to come up, and that's when you got to use it. And I'm just so did he give you a specific piece of advice that turned out to be really useful and practical for you? that you took away from it and not like you still use it and you're playing now? Well, I'll tell you one thing. He said to me, he goes, if you are in the orchestra, because he came to a lot of orchestra concerts mm -hmm. when I first started playing with him just to really check out my playing. And he says, if you're ever in the orchestra and he goes, you see a note on the page, play that note in treble clef. And he goes, and see what happens. 
And I'd be like, but that's a wrong note. You know, they'll, they'll like, you know, I'll get in trouble on that. It was like, you just see what happens, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I played it and people in the section would be like, but they wouldn't know what it was. You understand? Because it, it's not really a wrong note. It's just like, you know, it, you know, it's just like, wait, 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 let, let's try it again. And then, you know, I play it and then I play the right note. Oh, okay. That's okay. But if you played a half step off or if you played an out of tune note, it would be noticeable. Hey, 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 get, but if you switch the clef, it worked. People really couldn't tell. They knew that there was a little rub, yeah, yeah, but yeah, the, yeah. It, it was not enough to, to, to it sound like a weird harmonica. Yeah, something, it was right? just like yeah. well, something, something, something's up. Can we hear that again? You know, <laughs> something. But I don't know what. And it wasn't like bad, but there was a rub. Yeah. And yeah. then another thing that he said that really was interesting is that if you are playing a ballad and you really can't find a good thing to to play, a good idea to play. Mm -hmm. He said, make your rhythm a 30-second note. So if the tempo's like that, you know. So here's your quarter note, one ear and the two ear and the one ear. There's my 30-second note. Play that rhythm, and anything that you play will sound good. And he said, like, let's try it. And then we would play a tune. And I would just go, boop, 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 boop. You see that idea you just played? It was like, what did I tell you? And I was like, holy shit. You know, you'll come up with a good idea. Yeah. It'll just, just because of that rhythm. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. that rhythm will, in, and it doesn't matter what notes you play, but that rhythm will take off mm -hmm. and all of a sudden an idea will, will pop out and then you have something to work with. Because that's it. Because this whole thing was like, the idea is all there is. You know, he used to say that all the time. Yes, yes, and yeah. before you go out on stage, he would say, the idea is all it is. <laughs> and I was like, okay. That's right. That 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 creative act of coming up with an idea. Yeah. That's 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 the ground zero. Right. That's the, right. That's the whole ball. But game. the whole thing is now coming up with the good idea is one thing. But now coming up with the idea that makes the listener hear this and hear that and hear that and hear that, yeah, yeah. that's a real good idea. And those are the ideas that he came up with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, I want to come up with your ideas. Or <laughs> you got to teach me that, how to yeah. do that. Because now you're teaching me how to come up with an idea while I'm playing, uh -huh. which is good. And then I can work off of that. But his ideas are kind of like universal. Mm -hmm. Like they'll work, they'll work in this way and they'll work that way. And people will hear that and people will hear that. And you'll hear that. And, you know, you could do so many different things where I'll play an idea and you hear one thing or two things that uh -huh. you could do with it. So that's another one of his little incentive things that uh, that he would pass on. Uh, I'm trying to think of other stuff that he. Yeah, no, that that's beautiful though. But I yeah. used to, I used to love to hear you play with him just when you'd swoop up, you know, with that upper register and and match timbre with him. Yeah, you know, that was that was beautiful. Yeah, that, that was, was it. And 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 then you know he always would want me to play in the high register mm -hmm. when we play the melody, and I'd be like, you know, it's really really difficult. I, I love to play up there, but it's really difficult, you know, it's, it's, you know, and it's taxing on the body mm -hmm. to, to play up there. And, you know, I'm on stage right next to Ornette, uh, right up front, you know, so it's like, there's no, you know, thousands of people watching me play up there. It's like a lot of pressure. And he was like, you know, Tony, you know why it sounds so beautiful? Because you could hear the strain of life while you do it. You could hear that you're just trying to play as beautifully as you possibly can, yeah, yeah, but yeah. there's a strain in there. Yeah. And he was like, that's what I love about your playing. Because with your notes make everybody move out of the way when you play them, and you can hear the heart, the, you can hear the humanity, that mm -hmm. you know, because you're struggling to play so beautifully. Mm -hmm. And he goes, that's what I love. Because you know, if, a if I tell a cellist to do it, they play it in this register, it would be the same register, and they'd be like, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, what else you want me to do? Okay, yeah, yeah this yeah. is the, but you're playing it so up high and in the same register, but it's like this life that you're you're trying everything you got to make it sound beautiful and to make it work. And he was like, That's what it's all about. Yeah, that's, that's great, man. He could really articulate yeah. the yeah. the trials of the human spirit like that and connect yeah. it up with music in yeah. a very specific way. Yeah. And, you know. But I could tell you some very specific things. 
that, you know, I learned a lot later on in life. I mean, later on in his life, uh -huh. when I was going over there and just hanging out with him and just playing. Cause basically, because then we weren't playing anymore. Mm -hmm. So it was just him giving me lessons, teaching me. And he would tell me, you know, do you really know what a human being is? You know, and I'd be like, yeah. well, I said, it's me and you. And he was like, yeah, but what is it? You know, what yeah. is it? And he says, a human being is a man or a woman trying to figure out who they really are in life. Wow. And I was like, oh, shit. And he was like, and I says, most people never find it. Mm -hmm. And he goes, you found it. So you consider yourself blessed. And I was like, wow, Donet, you don't have to tell me that. And he was like, I'm not lying. You found it. You got it. Man, I should be asking you about I'm that. Just, you know, and I was just like, <laughs> no, but, and that was like, a, to me, I was just like, you know, because everybody's always like, oh, harmelotics is this, and harmelotics is that, and harmelotics is, you know, is, is harmony and melody and trying to make all this thing. And at the, towards the end of his life, he was just like, Harmelotis is the expression of life through sound, mm. through your sound. Mm. But you got to figure out who you are as a human being before that sound is going to come out. Mm. And I was like, when I sit there, I was, he just explained to me what it was all about. And everybody's so confused. And that's what everybody comes up to you and asks you, what's harmelotics? <laughs> what really is harmelotics? And everybody will tell you harmony and melody and all. It was like, that's, that's just all this stuff to like, you know, razzle dazzle you in front of this stuff. But well, you know, I, I think I, I have to give him credit though for being, he really was a practical theoretician and really did have a lot of work and thoughtful uh, ideas and information that went into the way that a lot of those things were built up, you know, and if you talk to James Bud Omer that worked with him, you know, at the very beginning, you know, and they had some very specific ideas and techniques and things like that. And I feel like if you leave that out, it's kind of like you short sell him as a theoretician, but if you leave out the human element and the philosophy like you're talking about that, you short sell him on that, you know, and that's, if, without that, you, you don't get the picture of the man either. And it's something about the way that he combined the theory and the human element, and there was no conflict, but they worked in concert with each other, oh, you know. And that was that was it. That, that was the it. totality of the that's, whole thing. That's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. exactly it. That's exactly it. Yeah, really, really beautiful, man. Yeah. What what a, a wonderful experience, man. You were blessed oh, to have. Man, I feel blessed. Yeah, I yeah. really do. Is I was in the room with a genius, yeah, you know, and not a highly schooled, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, intellect, you know, knows all of this stuff. But he opened up his heart to me. I always said he gave us genius lessons. You know yeah, what I mean? Because right, it was sort right. of like, here's the way I hear things, and after a while, you would start to hear and think the way he did, and right. all of a sudden, you realize, oh, I'm starting to experience this. I'm starting to yeah. internalize this a little but bit. But then, and I was like that same way. But then I would feel. It's only really working when I'm with him, playing his music. Mm. It's not working with, with everything else. And that's why he was like, you're wrong, Tony. You're wrong. He was like, how come I could come up with the orchestra and I could just start to play and it would play on right? And he could. Yeah. He could. It would just be, and you just be, wow. He was like, that's what I, and I was like, that's what I want to get. He was like, I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to show you how to do it. But then he would just you know, tell me all these, you know, upside down and twist my brain and, and I'd be like, okay, I'd be more confused than I was when I walked in. Right, right. So I didn't really get the answer, but right. it's kind of like, that is the answer. Yeah, yeah. It's just, he's just putting you through all these little, you know. No, I guess we have to figure out how to live it through our own right. experience, but it's like he showed us it was possible. It's not imaginary. It's no. not like somebody saying, this is this unattainable thing you can reach for. It was no. just... Unbelievable to be around somebody that was that good. I mean, everybody knows he's good, but until you're sitting there with it, you don't realize that somebody is that good every hour of every right. day, you know? Right. And that creative right. with every thought they had and every right. opportunity right. they have for, you know, and when they're eating it. lunch, when they're walking down the street, everything is another he'll, opportunity and he'll for find creative it. joy. He'll find it. it, he'll find it. Yeah. And he'll just, bah, bah, uh, uh, uh. and then when he gets the right, boom. He's yeah. there, and he just 
goes off on it. No, you're, you're so right. Yeah. Well, man, this was great. We'll definitely talk, and I hope play again. Just yeah. a beautiful experience. Well, thank man. you for inviting me, man. And I thought the concert went very well. Great, great. Yeah. Great. Yeah. No, Just, it was it was a great experience. Yeah, and I think the people really enjoyed it. That were yeah, there. No, it was. It was. Lovely. They were enlightened. It was yeah. lovely. I'm yeah. sorry, all of you people out in YouTube land missed it, but uh, thank you so much, Tony Falaga, for joining us. All right. And yeah. Sometime soon. Yes, please. Let's do it again. Yeah. All right. Thanks very much.